Good morning to all. Now we will start with our practical session. Okay. How are we going to take history taking? How are we going to examine the patient? And how are we going to present a case in the exam? That is very very important. Okay. This is very very important. Theory constitutes fifty percent of your knowledge. Practical constitutes another fifty percent of your knowledge. So practical exam. Uh, hopefully you are a batch which uh, uh, you you this is the first year you are presenting a case in your uh, exams okay maybe the first year and second year you will have just a viva session but now in the cnt or the ofthal or the spm you will be presenting cases okay so you need to gain some confidence while presenting a case the first thing what you want to know okay the first thing in this chapter we will start with the history taking we we'll start with the history taking in year Okay, the next chapter we will go on with the examination also. So, okay, so history taking. So, so if any patient comes to you, any patient comes to you, what is the first thing? What we are going to ask first? We need to greet the patient. Okay, we need to we need to ask the name, age, where he is coming from. Okay, uh, whether is uh, we need to present him uh, 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 what occupation he is working with. So this is how we need to start any case scenario, any case scenario, maybe a medicine case scenario or a surgery case scenario, whatever. The first thing we need to start with this, with this starting points. Okay, a person named X coming, uh, twenty years male coming from so and so came with the presenting complaints of. Okay, this is how the case should start. Maybe a ear case, maybe a nose case, maybe a throat case, maybe a cataract case. Whatever, whatever your case history taking should start with it. The presentation should start with it. Okay, so so what are the things I said? Name, age, sex, and what is the occupation? Where is coming from? What are the chief presenting complaints? Okay, so chief presenting complaints. Chief presenting complaints includes. So when you ask the patient, he may say you multiple complaints. Okay, when you ask the patient. He may present you with say he may start with a headache. He may say he will have a knee pain. He may have a knee pain. He may have leg pain. Whatever. Okay. But the chief presenting complaints while we are presenting in our exam, in our exam, make sure that they are relevant to our clinical scenario, to our clinical scenario. Maybe if the patient is presenting with a ear case, then make sure that the chief presenting complaints of more concern towards our ENT department, not towards our ortho department. Okay, so chief, if the patient is presenting with some other nose complaints, make sure that the right the, the chief person uh, chief presenting complaints so that it is more uh, towards that department. Okay, so chief presenting complaints should not include all the complaints what the patient says. You can elaborate it later. Okay, the chief presenting complaints can contain one or two or three complaints. That's it. Okay, and it should be in a chronological order. Chronological order means. Which is more duration and which is more symptomatic? So you should write in a chronological order. So say maybe a ear discharge, maybe a ear pain, maybe a hard of hearing, whatever. It should be written in a chronological order. Say if the patient, as the patient named X, come twenty years male, coming from so and so, came with the presenting complaints of chief presenting complaints of. Okay, he came with. He said that he has a ear discharge, he has a ear pain, he has a decreased hearing. Okay, and he has a tinnitus, he has a vertigo. Okay, but but one more thing, what are the chief presenting complaints? When you ask him, he will say that the chief presenting complaints may be one or two. He will say, okay, just mention that only. Okay, uh, according to him, say the patient presented with a ear discharge as a chief presenting complaint, right? And a uh, hard of hearing, that is a decreased hearing as a chief presenting complaint. And one more thing, one more thing in the chief presenting complaint, okay, you need to also mention the. If it is a ear, you need to mention the side also. If it is nose, no issues. But if it is a ear, you need to mention the side also. Which side? Which side is involved? Okay. And and how long it is there? What is the duration? What is the duration? Okay. So this so this is how the chief presenting complaint uh, should be there. So don't uh, put on some six or seven chief presenting complaints. Make sure that you limit to one or two or maximum three. Which is relevant to the work case scenario. Okay, so ear discharge or a hard of hearing or a tinnitus or a vertigo, whatever you can write, but relevant to our clinical scenario. Say if you are getting a case of CSOM in the exam, CSOM in the exam, then make sure that you are getting a you are writing a points of ear discharge or a hard of hearing relevant to our ear history. Don't much don't get much complicated. Okay, and if you are getting a nasal uh, nose case in your exam. Make sure that you write a case of a patient presenting with a nasal obstruction or a uh, post nasal drip or a nasal allergy, whatever your patient says. Okay, so relevant to that, you can write it. 
along with that if it is a year make sure that you are also asking about the side whether it is right or the left and how long it is present what is the duration what is the duration is very very important what is the duration history okay say obviously if they are giving a case of CSOM it will be a duration which is a long standing duration like say if the patient when you ask the patient how much uh, how long it is present if it is a year discharge in this case of uh, CSOM or if it is a nasal obstruction in the case of uh, uh, something else okay so if it is a year discharge the patient will be obviously having for months or years right so make sure that when you ask him he will say that he is present occasionally then it is getting relieved and then again it is present so if it is present like that when you ask his history he will say that it is present now for uh, one week but how long it is present it may be present for some months or years right so we need to elaborate that so again we need to be clear that in your exam scenario they will give a case of CSOM not a ASOM ok. So, we need to be very clear with the duration when you ask the patient when you ask the patient they will he may he or she may say that it is present for one week but when you still elaborate him he or she may say that the last episode was there some months or years back ok. So, we need to mention that the duration it is present from on and off on and off for how long months on and off for how long months maybe say assume that he is presenting for some 6 months ok. Uh, this is just a virtual case just an example ok. I will uh, in one more uh, in one more chapter I will present a case of CSOM to you how we want to present the case this is a chapter on history taking ok fine. Then, then so your history should begin like this ok name age sex I am repeating it name age sex where he is coming from and what is the occupation what are the chief presenting complaints ok. This is how the history should start and then and then you need to elaborate the history taking. So, in elaborating the history taking what all is needed? So, for this we need to know what are the history in a year in a year case what all can be the clinical history what all can be the clinical history obviously we discuss some two here two or three here right one thing we need to know what all we should ask from the patient ok. The main thing ear discharge ask him whether there is any ear discharge or a decreased hearing or a hard of hearing whatever ok decreased hearing or a hard of hearing and ear pain ok. So, ear discharge hard of hearing ear pain then then we need to ask about tinnitus I will explain what is what ok tinnitus we need to ask about vertigo that is our spinning sensation right and fine uh, we need to ask about any ear blocking sensation ear blocking sensation or any ear oral fullness ok and we also need to ask about ear itching history any itching in the ear is there ok and there are any other associated history. Associated history like if there is any complication as in the theory part as I said if there are any complication the patient may present with any headache or a, uh, any other pain like a retro orbital pain some other conditions which I will explain in detail ok. So, this is how the history taking should be starting from the ear discharge, hard of hearing or a decreased hearing, ear pain, tinnitus, vertigo ok and the ear blocking sensation or any oral fullness and the ear itching and where uh, any other associated history ok. So, so obviously the case you will be getting in the exam in most of the universities in most of the universities most of the universities they will give, like to give a case of CSOM ok. I am not going to just explain this only I am going to go in a depth about how you want going to take HT taking but just I am giving a clinical scenario in a clinical scenario most of the exams most of the universities they will give a case of chronic subgrative otitis media right. So, of in case of CSOM these three histories are very very important ok. The patient will surely present with this three history or at least these two histories ok. So, how are you going to elaborate the histories? How are you going to elaborate the histories? So, starting with the ear discharge. So, a patient comes to you with a ear discharge patient is presenting to you with the ear discharge. You are a doctor sitting in a ENT OPD ok. The patient presents to you doctor sir I am presenting with a ear discharge. What all the things you will ask? What all the things you will ask? Thing same ok start with the start with the side 
okay which side whether it's right or left we know that here we have two years right so start with the these are simple things which we make a mistake in the exam we may say that the year discharge a foul smelling or a greenish whatever but we will miss to say that a right ear discharge or a left ear discharge and the examiner will catch you at that point okay so we need to be clear which side discharge is there whether it is right side or whether it is left side so start with the side followed by how long it is present so duration duration how long it is present okay so maybe for 6 months or maybe for 1 year or maybe for a short duration maybe for 2 or 2 days or maybe for 3 days so how long it is present so duration we are dividing further dividing into short duration or a long duration okay i'll just go a bit depth in it so the examiner even though i may ask the question from different point of view perception of you uh, of these chapters we can just explain it okay so duration obviously in your exam case if they are giving a csom chronic separative water it is going to be of long duration but what are the conditions if your patients keep on saying that even on history taking is saying that I am having this only for 3 days, I am having only this for 4 days. Okay. So, what are the scenarios which can present with a short duration ear discharge, presenting only with a short duration ear discharge. What is that condition? It is nothing but a ASOM, acute separative otitis media is a short duration. right? So, short duration it could be acute separative otitis media or any other condition like otitis externa otitis externa in which the ear gets a discharge from the outer aspect okay so these are the conditions if it is a long duration long duration think of a chronic separative otitis media so this is how you need to differentiate differentiate okay so now we have done with the side we have done with the duration how long it is present so side duration then what then what else you want to ask what else you want to ask the the onset how it started how it started onset means how it started so onset onset we will usually divide it into sudden onset or a insidious onset okay sudden or a insidious so so what are the conditions which can be present with a sudden onset of uh, uh, sudden onset of ear discharge sudden onset the patient was clinically fine till yesterday suddenly gets a ear discharge what are the conditions which can present with a sudden onset sudden onset of ear discharge Either it could be a commonest one, which could be either a traumatic, okay, or a case of ASOM. So, what stage of ASOM? Stage of, stage of, stage of, what is the stage? The stage of perforation. So, what what it will happen? Okay, after the ear becomes completely filled out, it will try to put a hole with a pinhole perforation, and the patient will get a ear discharge, right? So either it could be a ASOM or either it could be a traumatic condition there can be a sudden onset of sudden onset of ear discharge right so insidious onset is that uh, it is there continuously for some months or uh, weeks or months or years it is a slow onset slow and a gradual onset it is not recovering properly so so obviously your case of CSOM if you get a CSOM case in the exam, it will be of an insidious onset rather than a sudden onset. Okay, why, uh, why I am explaining this is while presenting a history, the examiner will ask you why are you asking this. Okay, if you say that the patient named DX presenting with a ear discharge on a right side, which is present for a duration of uh, on and off for six months, make sure that a word of on and off. Okay, if it is a continuous, I will explain why I am saying about on and off. Okay. So, how long it is present on and off for 6 months okay? and, it, and, the, and uh, if you say that it is sudden in onset, sudden in onset then they will think of a ASOM. Okay? Obviously, it would have started previously but now, now it has been gradually, gradually it has been increasing and increasing. So, so it is a CSOM, CSOM is insidious in onset, okay? sudden onset is ASOM. In your exam, most of the universities will give you a case of CSOM, not a ASOM. Okay? And, and so we have done with the fine we have done with the so what is the side what is the duration and how it started and 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 uh, and in the duration we also need to mention how long it is present right so we will also ask it whether the whether the nature of discharge whether it is continuous or intermittent continuous or intermittent ear discharge 
okay so whether the flow whether the flow of the discharge whether it is continuous or intermittent so what does it reveal what does it reveal the continuous and the intermittent what does it reveal so obviously continuous air discharges if the patient says that he is having air discharge for 6 months 6 months that means if it is a continuous air discharge it, the discharge should be continuously flowing for the past 6 months okay it should be a continuous without any break it should be continuous okay intermittent is you will have a discharge you will have a air discharge you will go to your doctor take on some treatment okay the air discharge the, the patient will become fine the patient the patient will become fine okay but again again he goes for swimming or he takes a head bath head bath after he takes a head bath again he gets a uri again gets a ear discharge again so now it is a intermittent one so the patient gets a ear discharge and in between he becomes normal then he gets a uri then he gets a ear discharge this is a intermittent ear discharge so intermittent dis ear discharge so continuous intermittent so obviously your case in the exam maybe if you get a case of csom CSOM mostly it will be a case of tubotympanic type in your exam not a cholestatoma not a cholestatoma most of the universities will give a case of CSOM which is a tubotympanic type and as I am discussing the intermittent in the CSOM tubotympanic type okay that is the CSOM with the perforation we know that we know that there will be a perforation the patient the patient goes to a doctor uh, once he gets a discharge he goes to a doctor and then we prescribe him some medication the discharge will settle and then again he takes a head bath or goes on, uh, uh, goes on for swimming or puts on some water inside the ears it will get infected again and then and then the ear discharge will start again so we uh, so this is regarding the this is called as this is called as what is the type this is an intermittent discharge okay but where does the continuous discharge occurs continuous discharge the discharge has been continuous even though you give a tablet even though you prescribe some medication there is some discharge the discharge has been constantly flowing some you know, some dropping kind of feel is there so this condition this continuous ear discharge occurs in a case of csom with a unsafe type articoantral type so in articoantral patient which you won't get for the exam but have it in mind since the examiner may ask you in articoantral type okay what happens we know that cholestatoma has a bone eroding property so even though we give on some antibiotic or medication we are not treating the cholestatoma so the cholestatoma will be keeping on eroding the bone again and again and again and, uh, and there will be a uh, there will be a constant discharge constant discharge of old smelling discharge from the ear in the articoantral type okay so this is also very important the continuous and the intermittent okay and the next thing what we want to ask what we want to ask when the patient is saying uh, that he has a ear discharge okay you need to ask about the character the color and the consistency of ear discharge okay the character of ear discharge in what way character is very very important the character of ear discharge what are the character you, uh, the patient can say either he will say that it will be something like a sticky one or a watery one or something like a yellowish and a infective one this is what he will say so assuming the character we are dividing into watery ear discharge watery ear discharge or a mucoid okay or a purulent okay or a mucopurulent okay mucoid or a purulent or a mucopurulent so never say a case of watery ear discharge in your exams why why you are asking the history okay but unfortunately if the patient is a problematic patient and if he comes to you he, whatever you ask you say that uh, you ask him uh, whether you are feeling any water coming through the ears he will say that yes i am feeling a water not a discharge not a not a pus coming out if you say a watery dis ear discharge then you are caught in the exam why why again i say in your exam never go by the patient words you need to uh, have in mind have in mind you take a history you take a history but if it is relevant take a history which is relevant to your 
uh, the, if you ask the patient, uh, just say what are the complaints, okay, he will, he will be keeping on saying from A to Z, whatever the complaint, he will say that starting from the ear discharge, he will say that I have a hip pain, I have a leg pain, I have a knee pain and that too if you get some, gra uh, some 60 or 70 year old uh, ladies in the exam, uh, grand grandmothers in the exam, Okay, they will be keeping on saying like starting from the headache, I came to OP for a headache, uh, I didn't come for a year. Don't go by the patient words in some scenario. Okay, you need to take the points which are all relevant. Take the points, catch the points which are all relevant. Leave out the other points, leave out the other points. Okay, so why I am saying don't say what are here to Obviously, if you get some uh, old lady in your exam, she, when you ask her, okay, maybe uh, roll number A, once she goes, she will be answering properly. But when a last roll number, say uh, roll number 25 or roll number 100 is going for the exam and the, and the same lady is sitting for all the students, then she will be, uh, uh, she, she will be uh, fainting up. So, she, she will say yes to whatever you ask, whatever you ask, okay. So, if you ask that, do you have any water here to say, she will say yes, okay. But don't go by her words, that's what I am saying, don't go by the patient words in some scenario. One thing is a watery ear discharge, okay. The most of the patient will think that they have watery ear discharge, but, but have in mind, have in mind, the patient's language is different from us, right. So, watery ear discharge in a ear can occur in which condition? It can occur in CSF otoria, okay, CSF otoria. So, are we dealing with the CSF otoria here? Obviously, no. So, never say, this is just for difference. If the, the examiner may ask you, you may say that the patient is presenting with a mucoperlant discharge. The examiner may ask you, what are the other types of discharge? Then you say, but never ask a watery ear discharge in the exam. Watery ear discharge can be seen in a condition as CSF otoria, okay. And either it could be a mucoid or a mucoperlant or a perlant, whatever. So, these are seen in, so you can write in any of these, mucoid or mucoperlant, but the most common most common what you want to write if it is a case of CSOM, CSOM with an infective one, the patient will say that he or she is feeling some yellowish, some thick stained discharge is there. That is a mucoperlant discharge. So, mucoperlant discharge is seen in a case of chronic separative otitis media or it will be a case of acute separative otitis media, whatever or in case of any infections in the otitis external also sometimes there can be any mucoperlant discharge, okay. So, it could be any of these, it could be a mucoid or a perlant or a mucoperlant, whatever you can write anything, okay. But uh, usually it will be a, it will be a mucoid and a perlant, it will be a mixture, okay. If it is a pure pus, it is very rare, but it, it can be seen in an unsafe type, it can be seen in an unsafe type unsafe time, but obviously we know that, we know that there is a discharge here which is a mucoidic one mixed with the, uh, mixed with the yellowish pus stain one. So, it, this will be the classical scenario what the patient will say. When you just uh, evaluate the patient, 99 out of 100 patient will say that he is having a mucoperlant discharge. Even if he does not say also, if he says that some yellowish, some thick discharge is there, just go ahead and say that the patient has a mucoperlant discharge. Do not say watery discharge, do not say it has a pure perlant discharge, okay. So, this is regarding the character of the discharge, right. And what is the next thing we want to know? The, what is the, what is the next thing I said? What is the color of the discharge? And again, we want to ask the patient, what is the color of the discharge? Again, you may ask me what way it is relevant, okay. The patient again may fall, may fake you. He may say that he is feeling something, okay. But again, this is important for the examiner, for your examination, practical examination. The color of discharge is very, very important. Why? You need to ask the patient, obviously 90 out of 100 patient will say that something around yellowish discharge, no issues with it. If you say like this, no, no issues with it, yellowish discharge, okay. But if you say something like a greenish discharge, what are the conditions which can produce the greenish ear discharge, greenish ear discharge? Think of an organism. What is an organism? organism pseudomonas. If you feel a greenish ear discharge, think of a pseudomonas infection, a very, very important, okay. And one more thing, one more thing, we need to evaluate whether the patient is having any blood stained ear discharge, blood stained ear discharge. So, blood stained ear discharge, blood stained is not a pure epistle, not a pure blood, okay. Blood stained ear discharge, here the blood and the uh, discharge has been mixed, okay. So, what condition there can be a blood stained ear discharge? A blood stained ear discharge can be seen, seen which condition? Either it could be a case of as we predict, in case of ASOM, ASOM in the stage of suppuration, what will happen? We know that 
in a suppuration it will be full of pus right then what is the next stage what is the next stage it will try to make a pinhole perforation once it makes a pinhole perforation the discharge leaks through the pinhole perforation and comes out but here what is happening what is happening here the drum is being broken the, 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 the pus is breaking the air drum the pus is breaking the air drum okay so once it breaks we know that along with the air discharge along with the air discharge there is going to be some blood stained one okay so blood stained air discharge in a case of asom not in a csom not in a csom okay not in a csom the csom when you get in an exam usually the patient when he or she will, when you evaluate most of them will say that they have a yellowish discharge or a greenish discharge depending on the patient scenario okay but blood stain discharge when you when you are just answering in the exam when the, when the examiner ask you okay uh, don't say a blood stain discharge but when the examiner ask you what are the other types of discharge you can mention the blood stain discharge in which condition in case of asom when there is a perforation is being happening or in case of any traumatic perforation if the patient had a perforation the patient had a trauma and because of the trauma some injury has occurred and following which infection has occurred and has damaged the and has damaged the mid layer okay so in case of any traumatic perforation so following a trauma some infection has occurred inside and then it has turned into a uh, discharge okay so it could be a traumatic perforation okay so bloody discharge again again so this is another one so we have dealt with the okay so there is one more discharge that's a bloody discharge bloody discharge is a pure blood pure blood actually this is very very rare again never say this never say this bloody discharge that is a frank blood coming through the external artery canal never say this again it can be seen in case of any malignancies or common common thing is any injuries any injuries to the ear fresh injuries to the ear fresh injuries to the ear fresh traumas or malignancies there can be bloody discharge again never say this never say this you can say any of these two okay this is very very important some people may even say a brownish discharge which they feel that a wax is coming out a brownish discharge again i will say never go by the patient words in some conditions okay so again this is uh, same one the brownish discharge if he he or she says you can think of a wax again this is not relevant to your examination scenario okay have it in mind the examiner will ask you if you say that a yellowish mucopurulent discharge the examiner will ask you what are the what are the other colors of the discharge why you are saying that a yellow discharge okay for that we are explaining okay and one more thing one more thing what we want to know is okay and one more thing which i forgot to say is sometimes sometimes a blood stained ear discharge can be also seen in as i explained it can be seen in asom it can be seen in traumatic perforation along with that a blood stain discharge can also be seen in a csom unsafe type that is a anticoagulant type why why we know that we know that in anticoagulant type the theory what we would have read right so obviously what will happen in anticoagulant type there will be erosion there will be erosion of the ossicles and there will be formation of granulations so it will lead to some blood stain ear discharge can also occur in a csm unsafe type okay so unsafe type will also be not mostly kept for the exams okay so we have dealt with the site we have dealt with the duration we have dealt with the whether it is continuous or intermittent and what is the onset and then what is the color of the discharge what is the character of the discharge and then and then what else we want to know what is the severity of discharge severity of discharge so severity of discharge we need to ask whether the patient is having uh, say history taking important one in your exams history taking is very very important in your exams uh, that too the examiner even though they go for the examination point they will catch you in the history taking itself so with the severity with the severity how are we classifying we are classifying the severity into either a either a profuse discharge profuse ear discharge or a scanty ear discharge right profuse or a scanty in which condition it can be profuse in which condition it can be scanty and why when you say this when you say this the examiner will ask why okay so the profuse ear discharge can be seen in which condition profuse profuse that means it is flowing flowing in litters okay it's not litters flowing flowing and flowing okay so profuse ear discharge is seen in chronic suppurative otitis media safe type a tubo tympanic type which you will get in the exam okay as scanty ear discharge is seen in 
chronic suppurative otitis media with anticoagulant type that is a unsafe type. Okay, why there is a profuse ear discharge here? Why there is a scanty ear discharge here? What is the difference? What have what's happening actually? What, what is the reason for it? Actually, we know that we know that assume that this is the tympanic membrane. This is the middle ear, right? What is the mucosa in the middle ear? We know that this is a past tensor area. This past tensor is the attic area. That is a past flaccid area, right? So, what is the mucosa in the middle ear? What is the mucosa in the middle ear? The mucosa in the middle ear. What is the mucosa? So normally it is lined by it is lined by ciliated columnar epithelium, ciliated columnar epithelium, right? But the ciliated columnar epithelium, which is down, the the bottom part will be covered by a ciliated columnar epithelium up to this area. I'll just shade it. Okay. So this area is covered by ciliated columnar epithelium. Okay. And then when it goes up, when it goes up and posteriorly, the epithelium will turn into a cuboidal epithelium, cuboidal epithelium, right? And when it goes to the attic area, more superior, it will further turn into a flat or a pavement type of epithelium, flat or a pavement type of epithelium. Okay, so now. Now, what is happening here? Here, there is a ciliated columnar epithelium. As we know, as we know, the ciliated columnar epithelium contains, contains, it contains lot of cilia, lot of cilia, right? So, the name terminology is there. It contains lot of cilia. So, it contains lot of goblet cells. Goblet cells are involved in the production of, goblet cells are involved in the production of mucus, right? So, what happens here? What happens here? Now, say if there is a problem in this area, now there is a problem in this area with the tympanic membrane, which occurs in a safe type, right? So if there is a problem in this area, which occurs in a safe type, what will happen? What will happen? This area, as it contains lot of cilia and lot of goblet cells, okay? So it will try to this goblet cells, the cilia, the cilia uh, will be keeping on increasing, okay? If there is a pathology, what what natural mechanism will happen? Secretions will increase as the ciliary secretion increases. We know that we know that here. So, so if there is a problem in this area, if there is a problem in this past tensor area, so we know that this area contains lot of ciliated columnar epithelium. Okay, so the amount of discharge will also be increased. So there will be a so there will be a profuse ear discharge. Profuse ear discharge, right? So we know that it is turning into a flat epithelium above, right? So, above when it goes towards the attic area, when it goes towards the attic area, it is turning into a flat or a pavement type of epithelium, right? So, what happens here? Here, here the amount of cilia is less, sorry, the amount of goblet cells is less in a flat epithelium. The number of goblet cells, there will be there, there will be there, but the goblet cells count is decreased, right? So, obviously, even if there is a pathology here, there is a pathology here. Since the goblet cells and the ciliary secreting cells are reduced, okay, so the number, the amount of mucus secretion is also less. So there will be a scanty ear discharge. Scanty ear discharge. So this is the difference. Okay, the so, scanty ear discharge is seen in anticoantral type. Okay, and this, uh, profuse ear discharge is seen in is seen in this cubotympanic type. Never ask me that what is this area? This area is also contains cilia. This area also contains cilia, but here the epithelium is changing into a cuboidal epithelium. That's it. Okay. So, so the uh, so in your exams, in your exams, if you are getting a case of CSOM, which is a chronic separative otitis media, which is a uh, maybe uh, uh, which is a safe type. Obviously, you most of the universities and uh, will give this case. I say CSOM with a perforation which is a tubotympanic type and the amount of discharge never say it as a scanty. Okay. If you say it as a scanty, you are caught. Okay. So if it is a CSOM with a safe type, mark it as a profuse ear discharge. Okay. So if it is anticoantral type, then it could be a scanty one. But anticoantral type you won't get much in the exams. So it's better, it's better just evaluate the case, evaluate the case in the HT Okay. So so, this is the reason for the profuse and ear discharge that is because of the epithelium there, right? So, so uh, 
uh, and one more thing. So, we have dealt with the severity of discharge and what is the next one we want to know? We want to know what is the, we want to know whether it is foul smelling or not, whether it is foul smelling or not. So, what is the relevance here? What is the relevance here whether it is foul smelling or not? So, actually, actually, so which, which kinds of discharge will be foul smelling? So, when it will be foul smelling? If there is some severe infection or if there is an infection which can erode the bone, right, which can involve the bone, which can erode the bone. So, in our CSOM case, which can involve the bone? A cholestitoma, that is a CSOM with articoandral that is unsafe type can erode the bone, right. So, this can erode the bone presenting with a foul smelling discharge, right, okay. So, a foul smelling discharge is seen in a articoandral type and not in a tubo tympanic type. Okay, in the tubo tympanic type which you will get for exams, which you get for exams, there will be a discharge, but when you exam, when you ask the patient, when you ask the patient whether it is smelling, he, the patient will say yes. Okay, but do not go by the words. Okay, the foul smelling is a rotten egg smell, rotten egg smell. Okay. So, but the other patients, they won't clearly uh, evaluate that. So, when you ask a foul smelling, they will say yes, but do not go by the words, then you will be caught by the examiner. So, in your case, if you are getting a tubo tympanic type, then it will be not foul smelling. So, never miss this, it will not be any foul smelling. Okay. So, uh, in artico and the foul smelling here, discharge is seen in articoandral type, not in a, not in a safe type. Okay. So, this is very important uh, scenario. Along with that, we want to go ahead with what are the aggravating factors and what are the relieving factors. In any history, any history consent to our uh, year or uh, consent to our ENT year, okay, we need to ask about what are the aggravating factors, what are the relieving factors. So, when you ask the patient, okay, the patient will say that he may say whatever while taking head bath or whenever the patient gets a URI, whenever the patient gets a head bath, head bath few may ask you what is in relation with the head bath, okay. But what happens, obviously some water may go inside the perforation area and it may uh, irritate the middle ear turning into a discharge, okay. So, these may be the aggravating factors, right. And what are the relieving factors? Relieving factors, mostly the patient goes to a doctor, takes some medications, okay. The medications will be a relieving factors, medications. So, aggravating factors, relieving factors, right, and what all it is associated with, okay. It can be associated with, what all it can be associated with? It can be associated with any ear pain or whatever, okay. What are the other symptoms uh, the patient is saying, okay. So, he will say that whenever he is getting a ear discharge, he may feel a ear pain or whenever he gets a ear discharge, he may feel a decreased hearing, whatever, okay. So, associated factors, right. So, and, uh, uh, and uh, sometimes you, you may even ask you while you are asking about the duration, each episode lasts for how many days, maybe 3 days or 4 days, maybe for months or years, okay. You can ask that also. So, this is regarding the ear discharge is concerned, very, very important. Ear discharge, ear discharge, we need to, we need to start with the, what is the type of the, uh, which side, which side ear discharge is there, okay. And then what is the, what is the, uh, what is the duration, how long it is present, again I said, continuous or intermittent, the word you, you can say it as on and off, on and off stands for, the on and off stands for, it is intermittent ear discharge. Okay, if it is continuous, you need to mention it as continuous for 6 months or so, but 19, but most of your cases will be a tubo tympanic type, then it will be a intermittent ear discharge which will be on and off. So, on and off for some uh, six, uh, months or years, okay, and whether you need to differentiate between the, what is the onset, whether it is a sudden, never say sudden, okay, it is an insidious onset and what is the character of discharge, again I mentioned you what you want to say in your exams, okay, and then, and then whether it is a uh, foul smelling or not and whether it is, uh, what is the color of the discharge which we again forgot to mention, what is the color of the discharge and what is the, uh, whether it is foul smelling or not and uh, whether it is scanned aggravating factors, relieving factors and what are the associated factors, what are the associated factors. So, this is how our scenario should be for that for the ear discharge, right. And with the ear discharge alone, we can find out, out whether it is a safe type or a unsafe type. So, however we differentiate uh, with the ear discharge, we are differentiating into safe and unsafe or we differentiating, we know that we have already dealt in the theory part, okay. So, in a safe type, what will be the type of discharge? 
what will be the type of discharge, how will be, just, uh, just, just think and say. So, the answer, it will be an insidious answer, same will be there, but insidious answer, along with that, there will be some yellowish or greenish whatever, okay, maybe a mucoperlin discharge, okay, and, and it will be a profuse one, this is very important, there will be a profuse discharge, profuse discharge, not foul smelling, not foul smelling. So, these are very, very important. So, insidious, okay, profuse here discharge, it is very important. Here, here, here it will be mostly, here it could be yellowish also, but sometimes the patient may say a blood stained ear discharge, blood stained ear discharge and the discharge may be a scanty one and a foul smelling one. Okay, it could be a mucoid or mucoperlant or it could be a pure perlant also, but the main thing is it could be a scanty, it could be foul smelling. So, with this, with this we can even differentiate between a safe type and a unsafe type, very, very important, very important, very important. So, this is regarding the ear discharge of the patient is concerned.